Lissa Productions. So, the last thing we're interested in with these filters is the idea of driving loads with the filters. We'd like to hook something up to the output of a filter and have things function. And we'd also like the voltage delivered to this load to be very, very close to what the output voltage of the filter was. That means the the impedance of this load has to be large compared to the output impedance of the filter. So looking at the filter, it's useful to look at it in terms of Z out, and then we have some Z load, and we want Z load to be much, much greater than Z out. So that's the basic idea. Let's assume that the filter is one of our high pass or low pass filters. And let's just, for the sake of convenience, assume that it's operating at or very near the characteristic frequency, omega RC. Then we showed in the past that the output impedance is just simply the resistance over the square root of 2. So the output near omega RC. So that means that this load, we need to choose it to be much bigger than the resistance in the filter. So if we have a kilo ohm resistor in there, maybe we need this to be 20 kilo ohm, 50 kilo ohm, or 100 kilo ohm. It has to be fairly big so we don't load down this, this filter here. So that's the output side. The other thing we could imagine doing is putting the output of this into some other filter. So this load may be a different filter altogether. So we're driving that. Then we're interested in the input impedance of this. So Z in, and there we can go back, and if we're also, if it's an RC high pass or low pass filter near omega RC, Z in is close to square root of 2 times the resistance. So this input impedance has to be small, or has to be large compared to the output impedance of whatever we're driving this with. So these two things here we're balancing together become critical if we're trying to drive loads. Let's look at a specific example right now. So a specific example, let's say we're trying to make a bandpass filter by taking a low pass filter and then a high pass filter and have them both have the same characteristic frequency. So R1, C1 is chosen to be R2, C2, but we want to choose the components so that we don't cause sag. So we need to look at the output impedance of the low pass filter. Z out is 1 over the square root of 2 times R1. And the input impedance of the high, high pass filter, Z in, so that's the low pass. Here's the high pass. This is going to be square root of 2 times R2. And in order not to have any sag, we have to have Z in high pass much, much bigger than Z out of the low pass. So roughly speaking, we've got to choose R2 to be 10, 20, 30, 40 times bigger than R1, which means corresponding to the capacitor is going to be that much smaller in order not to have anything sag. If we then want to drive some load with this, say some other load, we have to choose that even bigger than this R2, so another factor of, say, 50 or something. So if we have a kilo ohm resistor here, we have a 50 kilo ohm resistor here, we go to another factor of 50, 2.5 mega ohms. That starts to be a little bit of a problem when we're trying to drive things. So, so the basic idea is it's very nice that we could build a filter that lets through approximately the, the characteristic frequency, omega RC, but in order for it to function like the product of two filters, we have to have progressively larger resistances as we go along. If we start with a kilo ohm here, we've got to have 20 kilo ohm or 50 kilo ohm here. Driving something 400 kilo ohm to a couple mega ohm gets progressively bigger. So there's some issues with this. We will learn how to deal with this when we come back with active components and transistors and learn how to insert a stage in here that can impedance transform this so that we can have much more convenient things. Right now we have the idea that we can build a bandpass filter that will pass the characteristic frequency and it will cut off frequencies below that and above that. And the cutoffs will be 20 dB per decade on both sides. So it'll be a, on a Bode plot, something comes up, P 
peaks and comes down. And if we have chosen the resistors to be exactly right, the peak of this, if this is a gain of 1 or 0 on the Bode plot, each one of these filters is 3 dB below that, so the entire thing we expect to be about 6 dB below 0 if we've matched these filters. If we didn't do a good job of matching these filters, we'll still get this characteristic, we'll pull this down a lot more. It won't be as good at passing signals. So that's the idea of a bandpass filter.